Hello, this is my first tutorial and it covers my button making process. This includes coloring the button and formatting the button for printing. I will be using two programs today, Paint Tool Sci for the drawing segment and Photoshop for the formatting segment. Coloring is pretty subjective. My method might not be the best way, but this is just what I found to be convenient for coloring quickly and cleanly. This isn't really a how to color tutorial, but more of a how I go about coloring and what tools I use to shade. First, you need to obtain a line art of some sort. For this tutorial, I am using a line art of Canada from Axis Powers Italia that I prepared earlier. Since this is a button, ideally you want lines to be thick so they show up on a small image. Depending on the size of the button you want your image to be, the detailing will vary. Since this is a fan art, I have references of him. One is from the official art, and one is fan art I pulled off of DeviantArt to show the threshold of the accepted colors for this character. Despite the refs, you don't have to match the colors exactly. I often adjust them a little after I pick the colors to see which ones I'm most comfortable with and look most natural for the character in this image. To select colors, take your eyedropper. If you're on the pen tool, the eyedropper can be accessed by pressing the Alt key and sample the area you want your reference color to be. I am selecting his goggles. After your adjustments, go to the swatches area and press the shift key. A bucket should appear. Click the square and the color should be saved so you can go back to it later. Do this with the rest of the image. I usually select the colors from top to bottom so I have some idea of which colors to pick. Now that we have our colors selected, we are ready to lay down the flats. To do so, on your line art layer, use the wand tool to select outside the image. Be sure to select all the outside parts until you can see that the white space, which will be the coloring area, is singled out. Then go to selection increment. This increases your selection by one pixel and gets rid of most white areas around the image. Then go to selection again and click invert. This should invert the selection to the area you want to color. Make a layer under the line art. This will be your base coloring layer. Click a color in your swatches that is the most prevalent throughout the image. Here it is the coat. Now fill it in with the bucket tool. Deselect the image by pressing Ctrl D. Now make this layer a clipping group. This ensures that whatever you color on top doesn't bleed out of the coloring area we filled in earlier, like so. Now, we fill in the rest of the base colors, making new clipping groups for each segment. I just used a pen tool to color them, it's not a big deal. Now that the base colors are all filled in, merge them all into one coloring layer and label that color. Now make a layer over the coloring layer and set it to Multiply and Clipping Group. Multiply is special in that it builds on other colors below and makes them darker, like so. You can equalize the shading more this way so that all darknesses are relative to each other. However, Multiply isn't foolproof, so you sometimes have to select lighter or darker colors to shade despite its convenience. For shading, I pinpoint a light source to be around the left side. I shade accordingly. This isn't a good tutorial to explain how shadows fall, but generally think of the components as blocks, and that they're lighter where the light hits them and darker where the sun is blocked from their view. You also have to pay attention to turning points in an image where the light transitions to dark, but that's for another tutorial. A shade pretty minimally. This is a button, so you don't want to shade in detail on this. For extra simplicity, I make one side entirely shaded to suggest a light source more, and shade some smaller things on the outside of it to polish it up. If you want, you can make another multiplying layer and add a gradation by using a watercolor tool, but for this it isn't really necessary. That's all for shading. Now we make the background. 
Since this is a button, I make a folder or set with my colors in my line art and make it a clipping group over this circle I have here. And the image clips to the circle. My idea for the background is something that has to do with Canada's flag. I found an image of a flag and clipped it over a circle. After adjusting it to my tastes, it's now time to add texture. I've already found a texture of some paper from a previous button, and I will be using it for this button as well. Copying the texture over, I put it over the flag and the circle. There is a bar above where the multiply is, and there are other options such as luminosity and overlay. Photoshop has a way more options such as hard light, soft light, divide, and more, but for this texture I'll set it to multiply since the paper stands out the most that way. And it's pretty much all for this button. On to button making. The area of the button itself must be whatever size you want your button to be. In this case, 2.25 inches. If we take a look at the resolution, we see on the lowest bar a 300 pixels per inch sizing. Pixels per inches matters a lot when making buttons. A higher PPI ratio ensures the image will be clearer. I usually draw my images in 300 PPI, but if you're not comfortable drawing in larger sizes, you can mix and match. I'd say a range from 150 to 300 ppi would be good. Notice that I've saved this image as a PSD file. This is because we are going to make some further adjustments in Photoshop. As far as I know, Photoshop can save transparent images, whereas Psy cannot. I save each button I make as transparent PNGs so I can size them to fit whatever button model I want in the future. You don't directly print the one button on a button machine. You need a border around it so the button can wrap around the button area. The border size varies depending on what size button you want. I usually use a button template, like this one taken from buttonmakers.net. A list of button making resources and button templates will be available in the description. I take the Canada PNG I made earlier, copy it by pressing Ctrl C, and simply paste it onto the button template by pressing Ctrl V. The button will automatically be pasted in the center. I've modified this button template to fill in a border color. What I basically did was select the cut line and filled it in for the future use. For this series, I like to color the border to match the flag, so I just sample an area I want and fill it in. I save this as a separate PNG. To position these on printing paper for final printing, I go to a new canvas that I size to 8.5 by 11 inches. Since my button was drawn on 300 ppi, the paper I have must also be 300 ppi to keep consistency and proportion. Then I go to the newly saved PNG, select it, go to Edit, Define Pattern, then I go back to my blank sheet and click the bucket tool. Above is a bar that says what the bucket tool will be filling in. The, um, it's, usually it's the foreground, but we want the bucket to fill with the pattern. Selecting the pattern from the box next to it, just click the bucket tool once and the page should fill with a button, perfectly arranged. Delete any borders where the button runs off. Since my printer prints extremely dark, I adjust the level so that it will print about the same colors on screen. You don't have to do this for really good printers, but all printers tend to print darker than what's on screen, so be ready to test out your printing colors and adjust as needed. And with that, you've got a ready to print button sheet. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to ask them. Again, I have additional button resources in the description below. Thanks for watching.